As guitarists, it seems we're always searching for the right scale to play. But as you're about to see, in the true spirit of rock and roll, the right notes are often the wrong notes. And in this video, I'm going to break down five techniques to get you playing solos like this. This style of playing is based around using a minor scale over a major chord progression. So in this case, the track is in A major, but we're going to be using a minor pentatonic. This idea comes from the blues, where it became normal, particularly for singers, to bend notes flat. Then, after a while, it became normal just to use scales with those flat notes naturally in them. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on the A minor pentatonic, which of course looks like this. Now just to show you the difference between using the A minor pentatonic versus the A major, let me get an A chord going. Now here's the A major pentatonic over this. And A minor. Now you can really hear that the A minor has that much more bluesy sound. But if you just go playing an A minor scale over an A major chord, it's probably going to sound terrible. So here are five techniques to help you do it in a musical way. Technique number one is resolving to the root. So no matter what we play within this minor scale, as long as we come back to our root note of A, it's going to sound to the listener like our lines are grounded in the same place as our A major chord progression. So there's a few places we can find our root note of A within this pentatonic shape. Firstly, here, 5th fret of the low E. Then again, of course, 5th fret on the high E. And then here, 7th fret on the D string. So if we just focus on this note and how we can resolve to it, well firstly, we could come from below, from the G below. Or we can resolve to it from above, from this C here, the minor third. So coming back to this A note really keeps our lines grounded in the key signature. Now, the other place I really like to play the root note of A is instead of playing it here, 5th fret of the high E, we can get to this same note by bending up on the 8th fret of the B a full step. Now, this is a really great place to play your root notes and brings us on to technique number two, which is string bending. So there are three main bends you really need to know for this style of playing. We've just seen the first one there, the root note bend. Now in this case, you're aiming to be dead in tune with the note we're aiming for, which of course is an A. So I recommend just play that A and then do your bend and try and get it dead in tune with that. Now I like to bend it up and once I find the note, then give it a bit of vibrato. The second bend you need to know is on the flat third, the C here. And what we're playing here is just a microtonal bend. So we're not aiming for another note, we're just pushing it slightly sharp. And a really great way to play this is to let the note sound out and then bend up slightly just before you move on to the next note. So this note here, this C, really belongs to an A minor chord, but we're in the key of A major, which has a C sharp in it. So what you don't really want is this sound with lots of that over the top. So just using this little bend 
adds a little bit of movement to the note and makes it that little bit more palatable to the listener and of course has a great blues feel to it. And then thirdly, what I call the universal pentatonic bend, which is on this note here, seventh fret of the G string, this D note here. So we can bend this up a full step to an E. And that's a really important technique for this style of playing. But also with this note, we can bend it up just a half step for a more bluesy sound. So full step, half step. For technique number three, let's have a look at how we can add some extra notes to our A minor pentatonic scale shape. So a moment ago, we just saw that little half step bluesy bend on the seventh fret of the G string. Now what about instead of bending up to that note, we simply played it directly, which would be here, one fret higher, eighth fret on the G string. Now this note here, is an E flat and when we add it to the A minor pentatonic it simply becomes the A minor blues scale and as you can hear the minute we hit that note it's instant blues feel. Now with this note I wouldn't recommend hanging around on it too long and two ways I really like to play it is just with a little grace note so a slide off it to the note below works really well or playing it as a sting so I'm going to play the note below and then up onto it and then back off of it quite quickly and that's what you heard me doing in the main solo. So now on the G string we've got these three notes at frets 5, 7 and 8 but we can also play this same pattern on the B string 5, 7, 8 and on the high E 5, 7, 8. So, sounds a bit crazy on its own like that, but having the same pattern on three strings together really opens up a lot of opportunities. So we've already discussed that adding in this extra note at the eighth fret of the G string to our pentatonic shape gives us that A minor blues scale sound. Then adding these extra two notes at the seventh fret on the B and the high E strings gives us an F sharp on the B string and a B on the high E. Now really, these two notes added in this context give us a kind of a Dorian type scale, but we really don't need to worry about modes here. What we can think about is how the pattern allows us to create licks. So for example, all of the notes of the seventh fret on these three strings sound great if you bend them up to the note of the eighth fret. Or alternatively, like I did in the main solo, you could play them as a kind of sting again. something like that. On to technique number four and let's look at some double stops starting with these two notes of the fifth fret of the B and the high E strings together. So as these two notes are an E and an A they're going to work perfectly over the a major chord so they're really useful in this context of playing minor over major. Now the classic ways to play these are either to slide into it, we all know that sound, or the bend on the seventh fret of the G string, bend up and then play those two notes together. Classic rock and roll technique. Then staying at the fifth fret let's move down a string to play the G and B strings together. Now this time you've got a C and an E. Now the problem here is this C is the minor third against our A major chord so it isn't always going to sound good but what we can do is give a little bend up on this again that microtonal bend just to make it a bit more palatable. Now the chances are when you try and bend up on the G string the B string is going to move with you but there is a way that you can kind of let your fingers slide so the B string sounds Mostly, you know, mostly as it should, it might go a little bit out of tune, but certainly it helps just to give it that little bend up. 
something like that. Then let's move that up two frets. So G and B strings again, but the seventh fret. This time I normally play it with my third finger here. So we've got a D and an F sharp, those extra notes we looked at a moment ago coming into play. And this time we can bend both of these notes up together. Something like that. And then lastly, we want to be able to play an E and a G together, but clearly in our pentatonic shape, they're both on the B string. So what we need to do is bring this E up to the ninth fret on the G string here, and then we can play it together with the G on the eighth fret on the B string. And really this brings out a real A7 type sound with that flat seven on top. So lastly, technique number five is blending in the major scale. So we've been focusing on this A minor pentatonic shape. But the other scale we could have been using is of course the A major pentatonic, which is really the same as the F sharp minor pentatonic, the same shape, just three frets down. You see, whenever you play the minor pentatonic like that, the first note tells you which minor key you can use it over, so F sharp minor, and the second note tells us which major key we can use that shape over, so F sharp minor and A, the same shape works for both. Now there's a lot said about blending minor and major together, but sometimes there's no need to overcomplicate it, and we can just play a lick from each scale back to back. So in the solo, you saw me taking this A major slash F sharp minor pentatonic shape, actually moving it up 12 frets, so now I'm at the 14th, this position. I'm playing those country style, country style, country style string on string bends. Something like that, but then straight back into the A minor pentatonic, this time at the 17th fret. for that kind of lick to end with. So we're going from a very major sound straight into a very minor sound. And that can work really effectively. So just know that when you're playing in minor, you can quickly switch into major and of course, vice versa. So thanks for watching, I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next video.